da 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 you know the rest. <laughs> to my official ranking, the first time I have ever done this, my first official ranking of all four Jurassic Park films. Yeah, now that I have seen Jurassic World and reviewed it, and I've reviewed all of the Jurassic Park films, so if you haven't seen the reviews uh, before this, I would suggest going there for my thoughts, but if not, you're, you're more than welcome all the same. So, <clears throat> let's kick this off. I'm going to be ranking all the films in the Jurassic Park franchise, so Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3, and Jurassic World. So yes, uh, this is my opinion, it's a very subjective list. Um, feel free to agree to disagree, or agree. <laughs> and yeah, please leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, onto the list. <coughs> so, a number four, I mean this was a pretty obvious choice for me. I. A lot of people actually don't rate this as the worst, but I'm sorry, I my least favourite Jurassic Park film is The Lost World of Jurassic Park. The reason why I think The Lost World is the worst of the series is because it's so fucking boring. The movie is a plodding mess. Seriously, it's written really badly, the script is terrible, the, the acting is okay. I mean, you have Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn! Such a miscast! I mean, the whole plot was basically, Julianne Moore goes to the island for research, there's another site called Isla Sauna. Julianne Moore ends up there, Jeff Goldman has to go and rescue her, and then, boom, fight dinosaurs, go to the city, and credits. That's it. That's it? Come on, Spielberg, what the hell happened? It's kind of like, I mean, the way I see The Lost World is like, basically, Spielberg was on set and he was like, I've woken up! I'm actually making a sequel to Jurassic Park! Shit! And I think the movie became such a contrived mess that I just stopped caring. And, you know, towards the end, when the dinosaur goes to the city... Just a stupid idea. Whoever thought of that? Jeez Louise. And, you know, oh, mummy, there's a dinosaur. Oh, for God's sake. I mean, the movie's such a drag. It goes on for two hours, ten minutes. I couldn't care less. And, you know, quite frankly, it's appalling. I'm sorry, it was a huge letdown. Despite the fact that Jeff Goldblum was in it, um, which was, a, you know, which was kind of nice to see him back, but I kind of miss Sam Neill. Um... I do quite like the action, well some of it anyway, um, but it, it lacks tension, the, the, the movie, it tries to build character but it, it just drags, it drags, it, it kind of doesn't know what to do, it's kind of like, it's like, let's have a bit of scenes with characters, let's have a bit of dinosaur fighting, it's kind of going back and forth, it doesn't know what to do, it's, a, it's such a mess, Spielberg's direction is confusing. It really is. I'm quite baffled as to how he kind of managed to make a film of this quality compared to the first one. I mean, there was no way it was going to beat the first one. Period. There was no way it was going to beat the first one. But you could have at least put some effort into it. I... Uh, he made... You know, Michael Crichton had to rush out another novel just so Spielberg could make another movie. I mean... Jeez Louise! But... That being said, um, you know, John Williams' score... It's not actually that good. Surprise well, Apart from the theme, the theme itself is fantastic. You know, the dun 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 That's fantastic. But the rest of the score is like dun dun. Like, 
it's kind of a bit repetitive and dull. That's the way I see it. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it's it's one of those things, really. But yeah, it's it's been my, it's kind of always been my least favorite because every time I watch it, I tend to kind of forget less and less about it. You know, I I kind of forget more about it every time I after every time I watch it. I kind of like what actually happened in the Lost World, you know. Um, and you got Jeff Goldblum, no, 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 Ian Malcolm's daughter, who adds nothing to the film. Um, <laughs> and when she, when she does a gymnastics shit, oh god. But anyway, I'm going to move on before I go into a rant. So, number three. Now, a lot of people consider this the worst of the series, and I can see why, but for me personally, it slightly outweighs The Lost World. So, number three is Jurassic Park 3. Jurassic Park 3, this one gets a lot of hate, it gets a complete bashing, like, a lot of people don't like this film, and I mean a lot of people don't like this film, um, I, on the other hand, I don't think it's as bad as people say, I mean, it certainly lacks the drama and intrigue and insight of the first film, uh, it's not as boring as the second film, which is kind of why I prefer it slightly, because at least... Jurassic Park 3 moves at a much quicker pace. So, in that respect, I can admire Jurassic Park 3 a lot more. Granted, it's not perfect. It fails on dramatic tension, and it fails on character development. It completely fails at just genuinely most things. I mean, the plot isn't too bad, it's basic. I mean, it kind of works, but they could have prompted a bit more emotional drama from it. You know, it's about a family, and it's about a couple trying to reunite and find their son. You know, and, you know, Sam Neill and co are along for the ride. Uh, but it should have really focused more on the family and that emotional connection. But no, you, the problem is, Joe Johnston is just like, let's make it, let's, let's, he just, he, all he offers is spectacle. He doesn't understand the dramatic tension and the emotional drive of the film. You have a clear emotional drive for the film. Why don't you use it? Why are you just bombarding us with action? It doesn't work. Granted, the action's entertaining, but it doesn't all work. You know, okay, the music's good. The music is good. I do give props to the music, and of course, the classic theme, but... You know, it's short and sweet. It moves, it romps along. It's, it's you know, it's pretty good. But I, I don't I don't think it's anything more than a passing film. I, I passed... I gave it a 6 out of 10 in my review, and you know, that, it's kind of being generous, really. I mean, you know... Um... It kind of ends a bit abruptly as well. Like, you have the big spectacular climax, and then Laura Dern's the one that saves the day. <laughs> and then Laura Dern's the one that saves the day. Speaking of which, the movie has some nice moments too. There's some nice moments with Sam Neill and Laura Dern kind of rekindling those characters and, you know, seeing where they are after the events of the first one. And she's married to somebody else and she's got a son, and, you know. Um, it's nice to kind of see them have a moment together because you know, you know, they were, they were together in the first one, apparently. Um, Jurassic Park 3, uh, Billy is a good character, though I don't like his death, well, his supposed death, like, they make him out to die, and how does Billy get out? How does Billy survive? Like, somebody please explain to me how Billy ends up in there before them. He was all the way in the river! Billy was in the river! How did Billy get up after being attacked by the pterodactyls, sprint across, so when, before, bef how did he get in there whilst the things were coming, flying in and coming underwater? Like, how was he in the helicopter when they were flying over? <laughs> Logistically, it doesn't make sense. Like, how was he there? He should have, like, they should have gone to get him. We, we should have sh seen them going to find Billy. Like, or just, just leave him dead. Leave him dead in there. Like, he's gone. Forget about him. Oh, God. I mean, the Kirby's are cool as well, and Eric, um, their son, he's not actually... As annoying as some child actors. Say, Cloyd, cough, yippee, cough. <laughs> but <laughs> Eric's Eric's okay. I mean, I just don't understand why every Jurassic Park film needs to have a kid. Oh, somebody for the audience to relate to. Yes, getting that. But 
you know, none of the kids in the Jurassic Park franchise have actually been relevant to the plot. Apart from Eric Kirby, apart from Eric Kirby, there has been no child actor in the Jurassic Park franchise that has been remotely relevant to the plot. So for that, I kind of tip the hat to Joe Johnston. Joe Johnston's direction just seems very meh. He doesn't. He doesn't. He, doesn't, he acts as though he doesn't really care. It's just like, okay, well, let's just have a bit of action. You know, it's like he focuses on the dinosaur action, whereas the sole focus of the film should have been that emotional drive and you know the emotional journey of the characters and how the family re reunites. It's about the reunion of a family, but it's not handled in the best of, of ways. I mean, partly because the movie's too short. There's no breathing space. I said this in my review. There's no breathing space. You move from one action set piece to the next. So there's no time to even, you know, like go, oh, okay, you know, like to discover more about the characters. You're just like, you're just like, what, what am I to think of this? There's dinosaurs running around everywhere. Ah! Oh! And, it, you know, it goes on for 90 minutes. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a part of me that kind of enjoys the action for what it is. I enjoy it for what it is. But at the same time, I want more. If you want a movie that's dramatic and has heart, this is not your movie. And this would have been a pretty poor note to end the movie on. So, for that reason, uh, the second favourite Jurassic Park film of mine is Jurassic World. surprised by Jurassic World, I have to say. <clears throat> it's by no means a great film, but it's a good film. I think it's good. It does what the other two sequels fail to do. It's kind of recaptured the magic and the intrigue of the first movie. Whilst the movie has problems, it does have some nostalgia to it, obviously being 22 years after the first film and 14 years after Jurassic Park 3. <coughs> um, I really like the characters. Or most of them. I think that Bryce Dallas Howard is, is the star of the film, and she's great in her role. I like seeing how... They kind of bring a slight emotional nod to the first one, in the sense that, you know, to do with the kids and the family, and, you know, how she's kind of... She's become obsessed with her job and her career and trying to inspire people with Jurassic World, that she's kind of lost sight of her family and like her sister and her nephews, and, you know, just them um, interesting. Um... I, and I like how her character evolves, how she becomes a lot more committed to her family, um, and, you know, she realises, fuck it, the park's doomed. I like how it's kind of John Hammond's in, in vision, like, John Hammond's vision for the park completely come to life. This is what John Hammond would have wanted to see. <coughs> but, at the same time, this movie has problems. I don't think Chris Pratt really was the right casting choice. I mean, he's okay. I mean, he's, he's perfectly fine. He's watchable. but And I like his character's traits, the way he speaks, communicates with the Raptors. But for me, Chris Pratt kind of just felt like he was just himself. Like, And, you know, the script... Oh, God. I mean, the script is cheesy. Like, you know, there's these whole references about him and Bryce Dallas Howard having, like, a date or, and then a romance. And then, randomly, in the middle of this complete rampage, they have a kiss. It's like, there is a there, there is something going on at the moment. There is There are people dying, and you're having a little smooch. Okay. And uh, the worst thing I can say is the nephews. Oh, my God, the kids. I mean, you know, what idiot decided that that would be a good idea? I mean, seriously, there's no... There's no reason for them to be there, and, sorry, it's really hot in here, and I, I sincerely hope that, you know, those kids had a good time on set, but, you know, the young kid, he was just annoying, he was so overly enthusiastic about everything, he's the kid from Iron Man 3, if you didn't know, he's so overly enthusiastic, it really actually pissed me off, <laughs> and his brother was a bit more tolerable, but at the same time, his brother was a complete perv, at the beginning, his brother has a girlfriend, but no, he starts eyeing up all the girls in Jurassic World. Okay, fair enough. Um, the action's really good, although it's more CGI orientated. I would have liked a bit more animatronic use, but there we go. Can't have it all. 
I did like hearing the music in the cinema. Hearing that music is fantastic. John Williams' score, well, Michael Giacchino's score, phenomenal. But hearing that original theme as the moving on the monorail to the park. I mean, the movie pads itself out for the first half an hour. It does take its time starting. It takes its time starting to get going. Um, and the climax is a little bit dragged out as well. Like the dinosaur fighting towards the end, you're like, come on, pick up the pace. And in that respect, the movie's a little bit too long. But that being said, it's a good effort. I mean, I think the action's it's fun and entertaining. It's tense. It's thrilling. It's it's good. It's well paced. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it's certainly it's taken a long time. It's the best movie since the first one. It's not as good as the first one. So, which brings me to number one, which will always be. It is so thrilling, so entertaining. The music is fantastic. The characters are really good. Part of the kids. It, there's just so much intrigue and stuff to like. Also, I forgot to mention Jurassic World had some nice references like Mr. DNA and John Hammond statue and stuff. I like the story. Just how John Hammond wants to. He has this great big vision, this great big imagination, and that scene when this is Welcome to Jurassic Park. Amazing. It really is. I mean. <coughs> There's a. I really like the characters. I think that Sam Neill is good. I'm a bit one noted, but yeah, there's some nice moments with the kids. That's really the only kind of emotional peak to the film. It never really reaches that emotional level, but when characters are on the brink of death, but. It's a very entertaining film, so much fun. Wayne Knight, Samuel Jackson, the supporting characters, they're great. Um, Richard Attenborough is fantastic as John Hammond. It's just great, and the first half of the movie is such, it's so interesting. It's really intriguing and interesting. Like you like the characters, you're interested in the drama, but then the movie completely changes. And there's that suspense, you know, that kitchen scene is amazing. All the dinosaur action is superb. It's so suspenseful, and then the banner at the end, you know. Dinosaurs lived, <laughs> and with John Williams' score as well, just amazing. It's two hours. It is perfectly paced, and it will always be my favourite Jurassic Park film. I mean, the first, the third one was the first one I actually saw, but the first one for me, it is just a classic piece of cinema, and it's a fantastic ride. And I, I really liked, um, I really liked it. It's really cool. Yeah, that's my list. That is my official ranking of the four Jurassic Park films. So, number four is The Lost World Jurassic Park. Number three is Jurassic Park 3. Number two is Jurassic World. Number one <laughs> is Jurassic Park. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Thank you all for watching. And this was on Mr. Tyler's 11. See ya.